first cast. Solid fish. <laughs> Just came off the uh, fly. Beautiful fish. Send him home. Bye, buddy. Okay, let's see if we can get one second cast. I was doing a little hand twist retrieve and uh, he actually bit in pretty shallow. Let me just tilt you guys down. The fish are jumping everywhere. It's a good sign. Um, in the future, guys, let me know in the comments, would you like it if I do a catch and cook here? It's on my to-do list, but first thing in the morning today. Just missed a bite. It's in that same spot too. Okay, we'll drop it right there. Uh, first thing this morning instead today I'm going to do pancakes. Another episode of pancakes and fly fishing. I'm going to talk to you guys about how I fish Rice Lake, what works. Um, I'll show you the setup that I put in first thing this morning that I had a strong feeling would catch fish pretty quickly if the fish were biting and uh, that's exactly what happened. So today we're going to have uh, Ryan on as a guest. Uh, he and I and some of our buddies have fished rice like quite a few times and we're going to talk about what works, what doesn't, and some things we've observed. Now let's recast. second week of November. I don't know when this video will be out because I'm backlogged and by the time this comes out I will have a little surprise, a little uh, female addition to my family. Okay, this little guy is the rice lake affectionately called Rosin here. See if that'll help us catch another fish. Are you keeping fish today? Okay. A good little fish. I think that's a keeper. If you want her. Rosinator right in the side of the mouth. <laughs> I don't know why, but it works. Ryan's gonna keep this one, so. Chunky guy. Yeah. If he's a good size for you. That's a great hook. Yeah, perfect hook. Thanks, man. This fly's done work, by the way. I don't know why it works so well. Let's see if we can get another hook up here. Oh no, that was a good bite.
Oh, I Thank brought uh, multiple sporks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is going to be tough on not a flat surface. Appreciate your uh, positive attitude. Oh man, that went way down. <laughs> I just couldn't drop mine. Yeah. No worries. Here's your pancake. Here's your one and only pancake because that's all the mix that I have. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> all right, and then there's maple syrup in that green cap one. And then, do you want some butter on top? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's kind of. It, I think you probably have enough butter there already. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you can have all everything in that container. It is really good as a real buttery pancake. Some syrup on it. It's okay. It's good. <laughs> good. Good. I mean, it's not IHOP or anything, but it's got a cast up there. Oh no. Oh no. Everything just came off. You see that? <laughs> oh, it's not bad. It's edible. It's not like literally a. You want any more syrup or you good? good? Just gonna finish it. Did you have all the other blueberries? Yep. You want any more? No. Boom. Not the worst breakfast I've ever had. It's better than my normal cliff bar. One thing I wanted to do with that pancakes and fly fishing video today was talk about how we fly fish Rice Lake. Between kind of all of us who fished this a few times, we've come up with some pretty solid concepts yeah. for what to expect when we come here. Um, I think basically without fail, we are indicator fishing yeah. with a fly underneath. Um, I don't know what, what you think, but I think probably a balanced leech is like the number one go-to if you're just trying to catch fish. Yeah. Um, balanced leech and then some cod mid patterns. I have actually, oh no, I did. I have caught on a couple of bobs, um, kind of zebra midges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like a hot spot pink bead with, uh, I think probably a variety of colors could be paired with it, but black, black and blue tend to work well works great in the morning and through the day but in the evening the chartreuse bead does seem to work better four to six feet below the indicator is yeah four to six feet deep for sure i think the two fish i caught today one was at three one was at four the color that i find can, can work sometimes here is orange hotspot mm -hmm. but for whatever reason the pink seems to work better in in my anecdotal experience strange sometimes they'll really commit to it and like drain the bobber in some days and then yeah oh, it's like today they just like tap it and they're gone and they're gone yeah those days where they like sometimes they commit you don't even have to hook set mm -hmm. if they do miss it they'll come back for a second or third try right away yeah. but that doesn't seem to be the case in the fall this is the first time i think i've fished in the fall after a pretty recent stocking I think the other thing to mention is that it seems to me, and I don't know if you would agree, the fish here almost move in like a group, a school, and I don't know the exact pattern, but I, it seems to be a north and south yeah. kind of cyclical thing where when they're in the zone, they're in the zone for maybe five to 15 minutes, and then they're gone for a while, and then they come back all of a sudden and everyone can hook up. Mm -hmm. Let me know there's a deeper channel right in the middle because it's man-made. Yeah, I mean, I think right here, because I think it goes right under that. It's dam to dam. Yeah, but I think we're actually pretty close to the gully here, closer than you are at the dock. Yeah. I think all our bites today were like maybe right on the, the edge of where it really drops super deep. Yeah, I'd say somewhere between 15 to 20 feet out. People have been pulling them out for bottom fishing today, so... Yeah, I know nothing about bottom fishing. And this is a fly fishing channel, so I don't, I don't care about those people. 
Honestly, these are not the worst pancakes I've ever made. Yeah. It looks like see-through almost. It's a fiberglass. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I want to try and get a fish nice docker on it. I caught a Go big, get one. Try harder. I caught a big uh, <laughs> cutthroat on it. Yeah, that would be great on a three-weight, especially a, a nicer size one. If you happen to get snagged in that tree behind you, take a look for something with a pink bead. Sometimes it's like you just need someone else's eyes on it and they find it right away. We are gonna just have a few casts on Ryan's Max Catch Ultra Glass Fiberglass. Seven foot, three weight. I've never casted a fiberglass rod. Interesting. Yeah. Whoa, it has, there's no weight to it. How do you, how do you cast weight, Ryan? It doesn't make sense. I can't, I can't even get the fly out of the water. I'm better than you. <laughs> I, I'm just using my arms as leverage. Honestly, for like a, a seven footer, not that bad. I've never casted a rod shorter than nine foot. Man, this thing feels so heavy after casting that. It's like you're spoiling me. I think in the near future, I'm gonna be getting a uh, a Chrome Strike five weight, and I'll be fishing two Chrome Strike rods moving forward. Honestly, your cast is pretty good with that thing, but you are going back too far. You're doing that 2.33 o'clock thing. If you're not throwing out your shoulder, are you even fly fishing? <laughs> it's crazy how the light goes through your rod. I think where it's a softer rod, try stopping it at like something egregious, like 12.30. Yeah, yeah, no, seriously, just try it and see how it feels. It's like you have to hard stop it. I'll tell you right now, your line stays way straighter. Like it goes straight behind you and it doesn't come close to the water at all. That was dumb. I <laughs> got it. <laughs> Third time's the charm, dude.